Hello, everybody, and good evening. My name's Coven. Great that you could join us for this critical thinking session. We're just going to wait for a few people to trickle in, and then we will get started. Hope you've all had a great day. Hey, everyone who's just joined. It's 6 p.m. It's Wednesday, the 29th of September. I am live here. My name's Coven, the founder of Kid Coach App and the dad of two kids who are having dinner downstairs, making quite a lot of noise, um, but I'm hoping that you can't hear that. So we're going to get going in a minute for the session on developing critical thinking in our kids, which is going to be very exciting. I've got an excellent presentation prepared for you loads of examples, loads of frameworks, lots of opportunity to practice. One thing that's gonna be really important is the, uh, the chat box. So the way this Zoom is set up is your videos are off and your sound is off, but your chat box is very much open. So what I would love to check if you don't mind, because this is the first time I've done this kind of special Zoom meeting, called the Zoom webinar actually. Uh, could you help me check please that the chat box is working, right? If you don't mind just, Locating your chat box and uh, putting something in there, just saying hi, and that you can hear me. Ah, excellent. See some chats coming in. Hi, you can hear me. All loud and clear, hopefully. If there's any problems hearing me, please let me know. Brilliant. Look at that. Everybody's found their chat box. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So in that case, let us get going. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Here we go, and here we go. So this is the session that we are going through today. Hopefully you're, you're, in, the, you're in the right event. If this is not what you expected, then, uh, then please drop off. Um, but, um, but if it is what you expected, then I hope you're excited. I certainly am. Do you want your child to be a good critical thinker? <clears throat> so here's my first question for you. What do you see? What do you see? Yeah, I want to introduce you to somebody over here. And I'm really curious, what do you see? Who is this? Who is this person? What do you see? What does she represent? Can you relate to her at all? What do you what, what do you what do you see? And I want to make sure I can see the chat box. Here we go. If I put that here, you can see my whole screen. So You'll see the dialogue as well. A superhero, superwoman, excellent. Yep, what else do you see? Please keep your, uh, your thoughts coming in. <clears throat> superwoman, might she have kids out of interest, I wonder? Might she have kids? Uh, so my mum, oh, Chehil, that is a lovely comment. Oh, hey, Chehil, we've spoken before. Yeah, uh, Z, right, is your mum, I think. Um, one, wonderful. <laughs> a version of Wonder Woman, a mask is tied to the string. Superwoman. Yeah, and well, I mean, it's got the M on, on the front, right? And, and Chahil said it as well. Mums, you know, a mum and, and a dad, right? Let's not, let's not <laughs> rule out dads. I'm a dad, after all. Um, but but mums, like, and parents generally, you know, we all have this, ability to be a bit of a super mum, a super dad, a super parent, you know, and, and genuinely, this is how I want you to feel at the end of today's session. We're going to go through some great tips and tricks and frameworks and examples to help build critical thinking in our children. But here's, here's a key point, like, we can do it. We can do it, right? I mean, by all means, send them to good schools, send them to excellent tutors, don't, don't not do that but there's an awful lot that we can do at home as parents ourselves. We truly can be those kind of super parents that we, um, we, we, we hope to be every single day. Um, and maybe not for 24 hours a day because kids, uh, kids can be difficult, um, but for those moments, right? Those five minutes here and there, we can be uh, super parents. Um, in this case, developing critical thinking. All right, so this is how I want you to feel at the end of today. And 
this is what we'll cover to try and get us there, right? What is critical thinking and why do our kids need it? How can we build this simply at home? And if you like all of the above, what simply can you do next? Just before we jump in, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself so you know who's speaking to you. First of all, I'm a dad. You know, that is the primary way I would identify myself. I'm a dad of two kids. Here they are on my son's first birthday. So this is several years ago, but it's one of the cutest family pictures we have. And I just wanted to share that with you. Um, remember, remember this time when the kids were really uh, small and cute and innocent? Um, so I'm a dad of two kids. And professionally and from an education standpoint, you know, I was lucky enough to go to um, a private school, Haberdashers, boys school, many, many years ago now, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, very fond memories there. Lucky, even luckier, I think, to get into Cambridge and, and had a good degree there in engineering and management. And that launched my career in the corporate world, starting off in strategy consulting in PwC, and then onto various companies. But to give an example, uh, Relex Group, it's one of these FTSE 100 companies that nobody's ever heard of, but I had several roles there in quite commercial topics um, and functions, sales and marketing, business development strategy, and so on. But I, I left all of that a couple of years ago to become an ed tech entrepreneur. So I started my own business called Kid Coach App because I wanted to do something for myself that I was super passionate about, but still in the field of education, which is where I spent my, my corporate years, but more, I suppose, as a, an entrepreneur in the education space. Um, and as things have progressed, we've um, built this app and it's helping parents like you and me have more meaningful conversations with our kids that in so doing build the skills they need, critical thinking being a great example. So what is critical thinking? Um, and just, uh, I just wanna, before I, uh, what does critical thinking mean, right? What is, what is critical thinking really? What does it mean to you? That, and, and here again, um, find that chat box, please. And just type in, what does critical thinking mean to you? I think it's something we all want to develop in our kids. It's certainly a quite a hot phrase going around at the moment, um, but different people have a slightly different interpretation of what that actually means. And that's okay, because it also goes through lots of uh, different names. So thinking hard, thank you, Tejas. Um, thinking hard, thank, thinking passionately, thank you, Rishi. Thinking freely, thinking deeply. Oh, Alison, I like that. More than just regular thinking, looking deeper into things. So we've got some adjectives here, haven't we? Hard, passionate, deeper, freer. Olga, thank you. Correcting yourself to get better. There's something in there, isn't there, about being aware of your thoughts, aware of your thought patterns, so that you can correct yourself should you come across new information or should somebody make a point where you're like, oh, actually, that's a really good point. Thinking decisively, another good adjective. Lateral thinking, great. That comes up a lot, doesn't it? Passionate again, innovatively. Innovatively, in innovation, creativity, um, entrepreneurialism, solving problems. Absolutely. Patty, that's really interesting. Um, define a question by asking questions. Define a questions by asking questions. Um, oh, by the way, everyone, top tip, um, when you're sending your, your comments in, uh, send it to everyone. So I think the default is hosts and panelists, i.e. just me. Um, but, but actually, if, on the drop down, if you say everyone like this, then everyone will see your comments, uh, which, uh, which is great, so that we can all learn off each other. Uh, like this. Great stuff. Okay. Um, Disruptive, ooh, yes, uh, out of the box thinking, things that people don't think otherwise. You guys, yeah, you guys have got it, awesome. Um, you know, if, if we did a word cloud of, of some of that, we might end up with something like this, right? Um, logical, problem solving, lateral, all words we, we had. Um, I love some of the additions that you came to as well. Uh, Olga, I can see your comments, but if you change your drop down box to say, sent to everyone, then everyone will see your comments. Great stuff. Okay, so critical thinking goes by many, many names. Um, the definition is kind, of, uh, is kind of interesting, you know, because there are so many words you can use to describe it. I thought 
maybe I should um, try and find a definition as well, right? Always good to start a presentation with a definition of what you're about to talk about. So I went to what I thought would be you know, a pretty authoritative source, criticalthinking.org, which is the foundation for critical thinking. And they said this, that mode of thinking about any subject or content or problem in which the thinker improves the quality, oh my days, um, I'm already a bit lost. It was, I mean, you can read that, but I thought this was pretty complicated. <laughs> and, and actually, I went to a few different sources, um, and, and nobody could agree on exactly what it was, or at least a, a nice, easy to understand phrase that also works for children, right? Bearing in mind, we're talking about critical thinking for children here. So, you know, <laughs> I just made up my own, right? And this is just me. Feel free to quote me if you want. Um, I, I hope you think it's um, appropriate. But for me, it's about you know, critical thinking for kids is, is getting kids to think, really think, really think. With, and I use all those words you described as well, deeply, passionately, broadly, decisively, and so on. Really think about what they're saying. And maybe important to say what it's not, right? Sometimes that helps us think about it. It's not about just remembering stuff and it's not just about being right, but it is thinking about something all the way around, all the way around a situation. And I add this bit because, you know, at school, sometimes there can be a tendency, can't there, to rote learn answers. Uh, two plus two equals four, and it's always four, and we should just remember that. Um, critical thinking is not about just remembering stuff. And it's not also necessarily about being right, right? Because we get um, A's and ones in our scores uh, and exams and stuff doesn't necessarily mean that we're a good critical thinker. We don't always have to be right. Yeah, you know, somebody made the comment that it's changing your mind when you come across new information. That is important as well. So um, hopefully, hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, and maybe some actions, um, some examples, I'm sorry, uh, even like just ram home this point, right? So here's a, <laughs> this is going to speak to my age now, right? So <clears throat> let's, let's say your child has a favorite song, okay? And if they memorize the lyrics to that, great memory, right? But that's not critical thinking. However, if they, if they then compared and contrasted it to other, other songs, other lyrics, maybe by the same artist, then, you know, possibly that could be um, critical thinking, right? With this, uh, this Spice Girls example. Um, em embarrassing fact, this was my first album that I bought at the age of like 12, I think. It gets even sadder. I, um, it was a joint purchase between my sister and myself. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I have this in my head. I'm sure this is not what the kids are into right now. In fact, I'm positive it isn't. But, uh, but it's what I thought of, and I thought of a, uh, of a song example. Anyway, one, uh, one other quick, quick fun example. You know, there's um, murder mysteries or detective stories or whodunits, right? Just like Columbo, love Columbo. Just one more thing, right? Um, if your child is watching that, then, I mean, that's good. It's going to fire up the brain, isn't it? But it's not critical thinking per se. But if they engage in it and they try predicting, hmm, who is a criminal? I think X did it. I think Y did it, and then revise their predictions based on what happens next. That revision point, that's even deeper critical thinking, right? And these are some examples from everyday life. We can be watching a movie together, and there's an opportunity for, for developing critical thinking, as I am going to show you in a few moments. All right, let me, uh, let me just check into the chat box, see if everybody is good. Fantastic. All right, so... Why does it really matter? Why does critical thinking matter? I wanna share with you this quick statistic. Have you seen it before? 85% um, of the jobs that will exist in 2030 have not even been invented yet. Just dwell on that for a moment. The vast majority of the jobs that our kids will end up doing have not even been invented yet. We don't even know what it's gonna be. That's crazy, you no? Know? That's absolutely crazy. And that's because the world is changing so, so fast. In, I think, a good way, I think in a very exciting, opportunity-filled way, um, I am I'm very much a, an optimist when it comes to technology and AI and all that stuff. But, but the fact remains, you know, much of what our kids will do, we just we don't know what it will be. If, if, we had a, if we had a stab at it, though, I just want to show you how critical thinking is likely to feature heavily in what they do end up doing. 
right? So maybe, who knows, just maybe, maybe your child would be a genetic chef coming up with brand new recipes that are very specifically put together for individuals optimizing based on their DNA, DNA and genetic profiles and current health conditions, right? Huge amounts of analytical thinking required there. Or, um, or maybe a space traffic controller, right? We have air traffic controllers, but there's more and more space travel nowadays, thanks to Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and everybody. So there's an awful lot of stuff going up in orbit at the moment. So there'll be all sorts of computers and programs monitoring all of that and all sorts of algorithms have been written for that. So we'll need somebody to manage all of that to make sure everybody's safe and efficient as we're hurtling around space, right? Or a virtual reality engineer, right? You and I are talking right now over Zoom, but fast forward 20 years, it's probably be some sort of 3D virtual immersive world where our avatars will meet. And so what will those meeting rooms look like? How will they operate? Perhaps your child would be a virtual reality engineer. These are just some examples. Like I say, nobody actually knows, but hopefully you can see how all of them require excellent critical thinking skills, which is exactly why they look for this in 11 plus and 13 plus interviews. And this maybe comes to the, the, the crescendo of the introduction, right? We're all interested in critical thinking for many reasons, but one of them I know would be to help prepare our child for the 11 plus and 13 plus interviews. And, you know, I've, done a lot of um, watching of videos from tutors and readings of articles that they've written and such. And one thing I did quite recently was to distill it all down into this, this two page flyer, which I can send around later if you let me have your email later. And, um, and this is kind of basic level, which I won't dwell on, but there's this advanced level where it seems that more of the differentiation is. And, and I just want you to look at the, the top few rungs of the ladder here. It's all critical thinking. Right, being aware of your own biases and other ways of looking at things, showing your flexibility by thinking of more than one answer, being curious and having questions that you would ask for any situation you're presented with, and so on. You know, look, it's it's critical thinking, right? This is what they look for in eleven plus interviews, and knowing how the future is evolving and why it matters so much, hopefully, it makes sense why they look for it. And the final point here, you know, for me, again, as a parent, as, you know, a member of a family, critical, critical thinkers are confident kids, aren't they? If you think about your own child and what you want for your own kids, I'm pretty sure we all want our kids to be confident and at, at peace in the world and good in groups. And, and if you can think critically and articulate yourself as so, then you can engage on any topic with your friends. You can share your views and listen to others. You, you can be assertive when needed, right? Clearly not overly so, but you can stand your ground and say, well, no, actually, I'm not sure that's true because X, Y, Z. And you can always be asking good questions and jump into a conversation, right? Critical thinkers are also confident kids, aren't they? All right. So that is the intro bit, right? What is critical thinking? We gave some examples, we tried a definition, and we've gone through why our kids need it, not just for 11 plus, but for, uh, for life, really. But this is, um, this is the meat of it, right? So let's get into it. How can we, parents, build this simply at home? And um, get ready, please, for, for lots and lots of different examples. Um, so I'll uh, check my friendly um, chat box. Um, there's a question from somebody around, um, can my daughter attend the session? Uh, yes, please. And probably I should have said at the beginning, and my bad if I didn't. Uh, have, have your kids have your kids here. Yeah, let, let them see what's going on, especially for this next bit, right? This is perfect timing because we're going to go through questions that um, are good practice for critical thinking, questions that you can quite likely get asked, and we're going to go through ways of answering them. And we're going to do it live, and it's going to be interactive, and I'm going to ask you to type in the chat box what your kids say, and I can give you live feedback on that. So absolutely, please, um, if your child's in the next room, um, hopefully they just finish their dinner, grab them, put them in front of your iPad or your phone or your computer, however you're um, uh, beaming in this evening. All right, so how can we parents build this at home? I wanna give you a sense of how we can do this on the fly and conversationally, okay? Let's say it's Monday evening. 
and we're at home and we're helping our kids with their homework. And today it's all about this solar system, space, the solar system, our planets, etc. And all we have to do, our homework, is to draw a diagram of the solar system and label it, right? Just an example. Probably we've all done this with our kids at some point. So we could do that, right? But we don't want to stop there, right? We're this person, aren't we? We're, we're super mom, we're super dad. We're always thinking, hmm, what, what else can we do that doesn't take too long, but actually accumulates to make a difference? So how can we build critical thinking here? And so as we're going through this task, I want to give you some examples. What if we asked these sorts of questions? Just as our child is doing their homework, you know, let's not interrupt them per se, but let's just have a chat. They draw the eight planets. How do we know? How do we know, John? How do we know, Jill, that there are truly only eight planets? You know, only a few years ago, we included Pluto to be the ninth. You can even see it in this diagram. This diagram must be an old one, right? So are there really eight? Are there more? Are there less? How do we ever know? How do we ever know what is true? We seem to be keep on revising our version of the truth. Going back even further, how can, we, how can we all be sure that they orbit the sun? I mean, that seems like a no-brainer right now, right? But hundreds of years ago, people believed that the Earth was at the center of the solar system and indeed the universe, right? So taking that really long view, are we sure that everything we know today is true? Or another angle, right? We've got the planets here and we've got Earth where there's life, obviously, but how likely are there to be other Earth-like planets out there. What do you think? Could life exist in other planets and other solar systems in the universe? What do you think? Right, these questions which all are quite open-ended have no right answer per se, but do get our kids thinking, can be weaved in to any opportunity, for example, doing your homework. Um, I just wanna draw your attention to something I'm including here. Um, so I've got these links in this presentation, and I can send this, these slides around at the end, by the way, so you're not taking too many notes now. Um, I, can, uh, I can send these to you. But I've got these links in here, which open up these kinds of questions from, from my app, from the Kid Coach app, so you have, you'll have free access to a few of them. Um, let's just take another example, and I, I'd like you to think and type in the chat box, right? What would you do in this situation? Say it's Wednesday now, and we're watching the news together, and there's some story about lottery winners who won millions of fans but have now just gone bankrupt after just one year <laughs> happens a few times isn't it you know what would we do what would you do here um i'm sure we would have a bit of a giggle and also be a bit sympathetic um and maybe talk about greed and and blowing money and stuff but say say this new story came up right about winning the winning the lottery about having lots of money these sorts of themes um what could you ask your children about Put it, put it in the chat box, what, what comes to mind? What kind of questions come to mind here? As we're watching the news together, questions that help them think critically, right? About the situation, about having lots of money. What would you do if you win the lottery? Yeah, absolutely. I love these questions where we put our children at the center and we ask for their opinion. What would you do? Or has there been a time when something like this has happened to you? Who do you think stole the money? Yeah, assuming it's been, it's been stolen. How would you spend the money if you won the lottery? Excellent, you, you got it, right? These sorts of quick discussions, which you probably do already, right? But I just wanna highlight that developing critical thinking can be done in these sort of spontaneous moments with our, with our kids. So as that super mum, you know, here are some questions that you might ask some of them you've mentioned already um you know do we deserve to win who deserves to win really what does deserving really mean i thought that was quite interesting um so absolutely what would you do with the one million pounds and again there's um i'll just show you quickly now i think this will have opened let me check one minute That's disappeared. You know what? I'll show you that at the end. Let's not let's not break the flow. No, no worries. All right. So you're getting the idea, right? Hopefully, that we can start to build critical thinking at home simply through conversation in these sort of moments. 
But let's put some more structure on it now, right? Let me, I promised you frameworks, didn't I? I promised you some frameworks that you can use with your children to teach your children to really help you think deeply about some of these questions. So we're gonna go through three, three simple frameworks. The first is all about pros and cons, thinking about, well, this could be good because, it could be bad because. The second is about taking somebody else's perspective, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Hmm, what would X or Y or Z say about this? And the third is breaking any complex problem into groups or to parts to help us think about it and order our thoughts. All right, so with each one, I'm gonna give you an example and then we're gonna have a practice strand where we can use a chat box. Let's go. So framework one, think about pros and cons. So for any, any yes, no situation, any kind of, it could be that or it could be that situation, think about the pros, think about the cons. It's an incredibly simple, right? This could be good because, it could be bad because, and weigh them out, right? So on balance, I think it's whichever side your arguments seem to stack. This is also a great trick to, um, to buy you time in an interview setting. If you get thrown a complete curveball and um, you're like, oh, I, I don't know. Actually, just think about, well, it could, be, it could be good because of that and it could be bad because of that, right? What, what would happen if rain was chocolate rain instead? Okay, um, well, it could be good because it's free chocolate. It could be bad because all well, the crops get spoiled, for example. Okay, so, so what about this one? Um, what do you think about social media? What do you think about social media? Um, so here you can see, this is, a, this is a question from our app and it's a really good one where you can do these, these pros, cons with, right? Is social media good or bad? What do you think about social media? It's a pretty, pretty open question, right? Um, but if we slow down the thinking and think about, well, let's just think about all the, all the pros first, all the reasons it could be good because people can use social media to raise money for charity or to find old friends or to build a business. Okay, and other examples as well. Uh, all right, what about the cons? Well, there's lots of kind of cyber bullying, there's fake news that spreads, people can get addicted to their phones and so on, and anything else you come up with. So on balance, I think, right, it's such, it's such a simple but effective mechanism. It helps us think through quite a vague problem, doesn't it? Because you're forcing yourself to think about all the pluses and then all the minuses and then you and then you balance it out um so at this point actually i will i will pause for just a second and show you because i can send you these slides oh, excuse me jumping around a little bit here because i will be sending you this um later i did wanted to show you how this um how this will appear right when you click on these links that i mentioned um, because what will happen is something like this will open up. Um, and excuse the lag, it's because I'm on Zoom. I'm finding Zoom slows things down. Um, you'll see something like this, right? Which is a, a conversation card that we have in the Kid Coach app, one of literally hundreds. Is social media good or bad? And um, you know, it helps us think about pros and cons. There's a bit of guidance for us parents to orientate us about how we could have the discussion. And then there are some prompts for children, right? Um, what are things that you can do which are good or bad? Which apps do you like? What skills might you learn from social media? And then if the discussion is going well, ways to take it further. You know, how would you improve social media to make it even better for children? Um, all, all of our conversational flashcards are kind of quick and snappy like this. And we have loads on critical thinking. So that's the kind of thing that will open up when you, when you click on these links, when you have the slides. All right, so um, your turn guys. Here is an example. Should we all have magic wands? Should we all have magic wands? <laughs> what do you think? Hopefully, uh, hopefully a fun example, a, a, a nice fun one to think about. Should we all have magic wands? What do you think? And don't just jump to a yes or a no, right? Think about it, pause, think about all the pluses, think about all the minuses, and then make your considered opinion, right? So let's, should we start with the pluses? What are all the good reasons, right? we should have magic wands. What are the pros? Why is it good that we have magic wands? Just put your comments in the chat box, ask your children, type in what they say. And um, thank you, Sakes. Um, we can make anything. If we all had magic wands, we could make anything that is needed. We could help the poor with it. 
Blackie's mum, thank you. And COVID, yes. And COVID, indeed. Has, has, it, has it ever been more of a need for a magic wand? Huh? Um, in the UK, we're kind of lucky, huh? Where, where, where we're sort of trending, but in other countries around the world. Um, a, a fun answer, thank you. So children can have fun, stop global warming. Amazing, right? You're getting the idea. You get what you want. You forget <laughs> If you forget your homework, you can just magic it up. Yes, no, no more, um, sorry, miss, my dog ate my homework. Excuses, right? Okay, so what about why we should not have magic wands, right? What are the cons? What are the downsides, right? If we all had magic wands, if we all had magic wands, why would that be bad? So Ruchi says, just like in Harry Potter, you could have a bad person that could get a wand and start to do bad things to people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right, like um, he who shall not be named. He's less powerful, isn't he? He doesn't have his magic wand. Uh, people could use it for uh, mean ways. Some people might hurt each other. It would be a chaotic world. Yeah, it would be chaotic, wouldn't it? Would we get used to that chaos, I wonder? But it would initially be chaotic. And that makes me think actually, right? What, what if we all suddenly had magic wands? That might be quite chaotic because suddenly we all have this power that maybe we're not responsible enough to use. But if we all grew up with magic ones, might that be different? Misusing powers, yeah, magic could go wrong. It's addicting. Yeah. Yeah. Social media is addictive, but magic ones would be even more so, wouldn't they? That's true. Yeah, so do you, you get the idea? These are these are great, guys. These are really, really good. Great. I'm gonna great stuff again. Really good. I'm loving. Loving the comments coming through. Um, it's good. You should drown me in comments, right? I'm just about keeping up, I think. But you should try. <laughs> you should. You should try and drown me with comments. This is this is really good stuff. So you know, think about it on balance. What do you think? And there's no right answer, right? That's the beauty about these questions. That's the beauty about critical thinking as well. There's no right answer. Isn't that refreshing for everybody, our children in particular, right? They're not going to get scored or marked at the end. You got eight out of 10. There's no right answer. It's about how you think, the process of thinking and explaining that process. And this right here is such a simple but powerful framework to help our kids do that. Well, it's good because, and it's bad because, and then by all means, if you then have a strong opinion, share it, of course, you know, so on net, I think, because the cons outweigh the pros or the pros outweigh the cons, wherever you're leaning. Excellent. Um, Cool, so thank you, that was really good. Um, second framework to keep this moving, hopefully this is helping. Think about what others would say. Perspective is so important, isn't it? As soon as you put yourself in somebody's shoes, you really think freshly about a situation, right? As adults, if you think, what would our four-year-old self say to this? It's totally different, isn't it? As, as, a, as a child, if we think, hmm, what would my teacher say to this? That can help us analyze the situation in fresh ways, doesn't it? And it also demonstrates empathy, right? The fact that we can think about what others would think. It, it, it clearly demonstrates empathy, which is also great for an interview setting. So again, let me do an example for you and then we'll do a, a live practice in the chat box. Here's the example. Do we need schools or can we just learn from home? Do we need schools or can we just learn from home? Right, a nice, a nice debating topic. Um, again. Down here is the, the link to this full card in the KidCo app. Uh, a controversial one, right? Um, I'm not saying one answer is right or, or wrong. Like it's about the discussion, it's about the debate. So perhaps if you ask yourself as from a child's point of view, you know, my, my mum might say, well, it's, it's kind of cool that I can see what you're learning, right? When you go to school, I can't see that. Um, but I can't keep you at home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm working, as we've experienced during uh, the, the homeschooling and, and COVID um, school closures, right? Um, maybe maybe your teacher says, well, I, I could do online classes. I can kind of, you know, I have got the hang of this now, especially after COVID. But then how much would I be needed? Maybe I'm worried about my own job. Maybe. Um, what about your 30-year-old self? This is a really powerful thought experiment, kids. How old are you now? Nine, 10, 11 years old? however old you are. Imagine yourself in 20 years time when you're about 30 years old, okay? 
your 30 year old self, your grown up self. What a, what a cool, amazing, scary, powerful thought, right? Imagine they had a time traveling machine and they came back to present day and they said, Hey, Ruchi, hey, Zaki, hey, Alison, hey, Sophia. And they gave you some advice and, and they had a point of view on this topic. Should you go to school or can you learn from home? I don't know. What would they say? Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe they'd say, well, it was, it was, I actually quite enjoy learning what I want when I want, but you know, I'd miss my friends. Right. So these, these are all different perspectives. And of course, your own perspective, right? What do you think? Let's not, let's not forget about that. So let's, um, let's do an example. Sort of similar and equally controversial. This might um, create a fun discussion at home just now. Um, sorry if I've uh, throwing the cat amongst the pigeons here. <laughs> but should children set their own bedtimes? Should children set their own bedtimes? What do we think? Right, jump in that chat box. Let me know what you think. Um, try and break it down into what different people would say, right? What would your mum say to this? What would your teacher say to this? What would your 30-year-old self say to this? Okay, should children set their own bedtimes? Mum, teacher, 30-year-old self, what would these different people say to this? Yeah, have a think. This is a, this is a harder one, isn't it? Because you've got those different perspectives to think about. Oops, excuse me. So just as you're doing that, I let this load as well so you can see it. What would your mum say? to you setting your own bedtime? What would your teacher say? What would your 30-year-old self say? What would, what would somebody else say? You know, you don't just have to use these three examples. If you can think of another person who you wanna kind of um, get into the shoes of, then, then you should do that, right? So this is, this is the, the same card on the Kid Coach app. Um, it's a special link where, where we can look at it for free here. And um, you know, there are some arguments in here already, but. Maybe I shouldn't show that too much at this stage. I want to see what's been coming in this chat box, which I'm going to go back and look at in just a second. Right, where's my trusty chat box? Okay, excellent. So I'm going to go back to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, parents. My parents would say, um, I like spending time with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you do need sleep. Interesting. Yeah. So they might want you to stay up a little bit, but also acknowledge that you need sleep. Um, my mum would say that, no, you shouldn't because you'll be tired the next day. Uh, yes, I can imagine that would be a, a popular thing, a common thing that mums and dads would say. Uh, all right, my teacher sakes is sharing. My teacher will not want to teach tired children. Yeah, that's true. You know, maybe, maybe your teacher would would like the fact that you're learning independence and you're making your own decisions, but it's hard teaching a class of tired children, for sure. Let's have a read of some of these. Uh, on one hand, mum would say no, because children may not know why they need sleep. Yeah, this is an interesting one, isn't it, guys? So as, as children, you might want to set your own bedtime. You might feel like um, you should be able to do that. Um, but, but your parents might say, well, actually, you, you're not quite old enough to appreciate why you need sleep, and they might set the rule for you. Right. Um, my older self, yeah, thank you. My older self would love to sleep at midnight every day <laughs> to make the most out of life. Huh? Uh, cool. Do we have any others from my 30-year-old self? That's that, that sort of powerful thought experiment. My older self would say, I've not got enough rest. Yeah, maybe maybe your your current self, Ruchi. Maybe um, I'm sorry, I don't know how old you are, but let's let's say you're ten years old. Um, maybe 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 um, you would want to set your own bedtime, stay up late and such. But maybe your older self would say, actually, it's quite important that I got that rest. <laughs> Good stuff. So, getting the idea there, nicely done. Yes, Ruchi, your older self might say you've got into a bad habit, and. Um, and maybe as a, maybe as a grown up, they can't. They have no routine, and they sleep too late, and they continue that bad habit. So maybe they wish that they created the good habit at a younger age, right? Like, oh, I mean, you, you guys are sharing so many points that I wouldn't have even thought of, right? That no individual, no single individual, could think of all of this. But here's such a good Jedi mind trick: 
right? As soon as we put our mind into somebody else's, as soon as we put our shoes, sorry, our feet into somebody else's shoes, it helps us think about totally new perspectives, right? Which maybe illuminates the problem for us. Amazing stuff. You guys are a super group, loving these thoughts. I'm gonna give you one last framework, which hopefully helps. Um, think in groups, think in categories, right? Framework three, think in categories. It's like when you've got to do the shopping. Um, at, at Grown Ups, I'm speaking to, hear, uh, to you here a little bit. You know, you know when um, you're going to the shops and your spouse says, oh yeah, and can you just get the, um, the, the bread, the milk, uh, the eggs? Oh yeah, and you know, if while you're there, do you mind grabbing some toilet paper, some courgettes, and um, uh, a pie to stick in the oven? You know, what? I can't remember that. It's hard, right? But when you break it down into groups, like, well, all right, fruit and veg, fruit and veg, right? There's courgettes and mushrooms, okay. Uh, dairy, uh, oh yeah, she said uh, milk and yogurt. Drinks, um, okay, I need some orange juice and some water. And so on. it helps, doesn't it? It helps when we think in groups. And the same approach is true when we have so many thoughts to a question that we are struggling to organize our thoughts. But if we think in groups, that helps. And actually, as you're about to see, thinking in groups yields even more thoughts that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. So example time, classic question, right? What would you take with you to a desert island? What would you take with you to a desert island? And if you're getting really narrow on this, you might even say, what one thing would you bring with you to a desert island as we do in the Kid Coach app? There's so much you could take, right? But if you, if you help, sort of force yourself to think in categories or groups first, I think it really helps. So you can say, all right, well, with food and drink, all right, food and drink. Okay, so I need food, I need drink. All right, maybe I want a can of beans. Oh, okay, but wait, I'm gonna have to heat that up. Okay, so I'll need some fire as well. Okay, and then, yeah, blend. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you only eat beans, you can have lots of other food, right? But what, what are the, what's the food and drink? Okay, then entertainment, maybe that's my next category, entertainment. What do I do for leisure, for pastime? Maybe there's books or games I wanna take, whatever else. Okay, great, communication. How do I talk to people? Maybe I can bring my phone. Maybe, maybe there's, a, maybe there's a, a 3G signal. Maybe there's Wi-Fi even. Crikey, there's Wi-Fi everywhere nowadays. Um, I'll leave my charger as well, probably, for my phone. It's funny, you know, um, I was asking this question to one child um, because I, I test all of our questions on children. Um, it's actually in, in part of a podcast called Kid Coach Conversations. Kid Coach Conversations. And um, I was asking one, one child this, and I was encouraging him to think through the categories. And then because we did that, he thought of the category travel, travel, which hadn't occurred to me, right? He was talking about sort of getting around the island. So he thought, okay, that's the category of travel. And then he thought, oh, if it's travel, I'll, I'll just have a boat. I'll just take a boat with me so I can get off the island whenever I want. Which is, a, which is a slightly genius answer, but, but it only came because we were thinking about categories, right? We thought about this whole other category called travel, which we wouldn't have um, thought of things within otherwise. Okay, um, practice time. Sticking with the uh, sort of the, the new island, new country kind of theme, um, what three laws would you make if you founded a new country? Right, say you found a new country. You found a new country or you, maybe even you conquered a new country, I don't know, um, or you found a desert island, a large island that nobody had set foot on before, and you had a bunch of your family and friends with you or, or people with you, and you had to govern, right? What, what three laws would you pass if you're in charge of a new country? And, and again, jump in the chat box here, please. Have a think about it. And, and again, with this sort of question, it's so open-ended, isn't it? There's just so much that you could say here. So it helps to think in those categories. And I've given you some as starters, right? So perhaps on the education front, right? When it comes to education, what kind of laws would you pass? Do children have to go to school? From what age? What kinds of schools do we have? I don't know. Um, health, right? We want to keep people healthy. What happens if somebody's sick? What are the rules regarding medicine? How much do things cost? Or housing? People need, um, people need to live somewhere, right? Um, is housing free? Is it paid? What, uh, what kinds of housing is around? Crime, right? Hopefully nobody does naughty things, but, but if they do, you know, how do you police that? How do you, what's the justice system like? And 
et cetera, et cetera. There are so many departments in a government on there. Here, here are just a few examples. So, so let me know in the chat box, um, what, what laws would you pass? But, but think in those categories, right? Education, I do this. Health, I do this. And so on. Right. Let's jump in. Amazing. I'm loving, I'm loving all of your thoughts here, guys. Okay, education, Nilda. Education, free education for the poor. Yeah, amazing. Love that. Love that. Love the um, love the ideology of that. Um, <laughs> Richie, brilliant. All pupils shall attend private or grammar schools without an exam. Um, Richie, are you are you preparing for an exam by any chance? Is that why you're saying that? Um, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of children here who would, um, would agree with you there. Uh, not sure how you would kind of um, filter for who goes, but, but anyway, I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, littering, so it, I, maybe that's under the criminal sort of bucket, right? No littering, strong police force, housing for residents. Everyone must be kind. Yeah, so see, like maybe that's in like, the social bucket or the community bucket. Yeah, you can't break any laws, don't do anything bad. Excellent. Yeah, so think about, think about the categories, yeah? Um, Ruchi, health. All children should have a health check every six months. Yeah, brilliant. Especially in those early years, huh? When it's, it's really important. Um, uh, Ruchi, again, housing. Every person shall live in a normal sized house. I'm, I'm curious what you mean by that, Ruchi. What does normal size mean? If you had to define normal, what is normal to people? Uh, Nilda, no pollution, free medicine, appointments every three months. Okay, great. No pollution. How would you? So I'm gonna. This is a this is a smart group. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push you a little bit now, guys. Um, uh, Nilda, no pollution. How would you enforce that, or how would you incentivize that? I mean, I, I agree that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? To have no pollution, but how would you make that happen? How would you make that happen? Uh, free education, Alison. Yeah, great. Love the ideology. How would you make that happen? Um, how would you how would you pay the teachers? How would you um, make sure schools have money for to buy books and computers and and so on? Right. How how would you make sure everybody gets free education? Um, SK, love that. Treating everyone equally, no matter who they are. How do you, I'm, I, I, I sound like a broken record, don't I? Um, how do you do that? How do you do that? Isn't that such an amazing thing? Is that the kind of thing, um, again, to think in categories, right? Is it carrot or stick, right? Is it a stick? Do you, do you punish people if they treat somebody unwell? Or do you offer the carrot? Do you offer the incentive that you encourage people to treat each other well, right? What's more effective? What do you think, SK? Let me know. Kenny, everyone must have some sort of health insurance. Okay, why is that? Why is that? And Kenny, I'm gonna get you to think about other countries that already exist that have different types of health programs, right? Um, so for example, in the United States, everybody has or should have insurance so that when they get sick, their insurance pays for it. Just like we all have car insurance, right? When we crash our car, then the insurance company will, will pay for it, um, sometimes not, but they should pay for it to get it fixed. Uh, so what can we learn from other countries, right? You, you don't need to know the answer to that now, but have a think about the research you would do, right? To learn from what other countries are doing. All right, brilliant. I, I, I you guys, you, you've risen to the challenge. I'm, I, I now can't keep up with all your messages. <laughs> um, there's such amazing stuff here. I. I promise you at the end of this, I will look back at this. Um, and you know, you guys have already given me such amazing ideas. This is really good stuff, right? But this is this is that framework, right? Think in categories. Amazing. So these are the three critical thinking frameworks we just went through. Really simple, but really effective. Pros and cons. Well, this would be good because it'd be bad because, right? Magic ones would be good because, magic ones would be bad because. What would other people say about this? Can we take perspectives? Well, children should set their own bedtime because when my mom would say this and my teacher would say that and my 30-year-old self would say that. And thirdly, how can I break the problem down into groups? 
groups, right? What are the three laws you'd pass if you founded a new country? Well, on education, I do this. On housing, I do that. On crime, I do that. And so on. Right? Really, really simple, really effective. And I want to keep it simple and effective because that's what we remember. And it's what we can use in the, uh, the heat of the moment, perhaps in an 11 plus interview. And you can, guys, here's a top tip, right? You can even say what you're doing because that shows how you're thinking, right? Say, say you get asked, hmm, should everyone have magic wands? You might say, oh, that's, that's fun. That's interesting. I'd love to think about that. Let me think about why it could be good. Let me think about why it could be bad. And then I'll make up my mind. All right. So it could be good because, right? You can, you can say what you're doing. It's, it's perfectly fine. In fact, people might appreciate it because they can follow your train of thought. All right. Amazing stuff. So hopefully, hopefully parents, kids are getting excited, right? About how we can build these critical thinking skills simply through conversation at home. And I want to leave you with a few ideas, right? There are some, um, some golden rules, if you like, that I'd, I'd, love, I'd love you to think about. You know, this is what I do with my own kids. This is what I see helps. This is what I see with the, the people who use the Kid Coach app, as an example. This is the feedback that parents give me. It's just about finding five minutes a day for a slightly unusual conversation, asking a, a slightly wacky, open-ended question, just like the examples we've gone through. Right? Not, not just talking about how was school today or have you done your homework or what did you eat for lunch or have you packed your bag or these kinds of conversations that we all have with our kids. I, <laughs> I, I have plenty of them myself. But just finding five minutes for something slightly quirky, slightly unusual, and it's literally five minutes, right? Maybe it's on the walk back from school. Maybe it's at the dinner table. Maybe it's just before bedtime, whatever works for you. And to use that time to open up thinking with questions asking why, and can you give me an example? And what would your teacher say to that? And why could that be a good thing? And um, can you break the problem down into groups? And all these open-ended prompts, by the way, which you find lots of in, in the Kid Coach app question cards. Um, staying curious, encouraging our kids to be so, and, and being a facilitator of the conversation, right? As, as parents here having these conversations, but we're not the teacher, we're not the examiner, we don't have all the right answers because there is none. We're, you know, think of yourself as a peer. It's, it's, a, it's a level conversation, right? And we're just um, stoking up the conversation with some well-chosen remarks. And we can all be the super parent, I promise you. You know, remember we started the presentation with this character, this, this super mom, the super dad, the super parent. One, um, one, one fact I wanna um, make sure you remember our kids only spend 20% of their time at school. Our kids only spend 20% of their time at school. If you, it's crazy, isn't it? But if you look at all the hours they're awake, right? Not when they're sleeping, they're at home, right? <laughs> but when they're awake across the year and you look at how many of those hours are actually spent at school, it's about 20%. It's crazy low. The reason it's so low is because of the long summer holidays, of all those evenings, all those weekends, all of those times that they're, they're mainly at home with us, right? A child spends up to 80% 80, 80 of their waking hours at home with us parents. There's so much that we can do with them and for them. We have the smallest class sizes in the world, right? If you have one or two or three kids, that's a tiny class size, isn't it? Teachers would love to have a small class size like that. And we have fantastic relationships with our students. All of this means that we have the fundamentals in place to be super, super parents. And, and I, I, I get really passionate about helping parents with this, um, which is why I built the Kid Coach app. So hopefully, hopefully it can help, you know, it's, it's something if, if you, if you like my train of thought here, if you like some of the questions that we've gone through, I really want you to check out the Kid Coach app. There's hundreds and hundreds of these quick and fun and thought provoking questions for kids. And as you saw in those cards I put on screen, right? There are all these coaching prompts to help you extend the conversation. Frankly, anybody can Google interesting questions, but what doesn't exist anywhere, and I spent hours and hours writing, are those follow-on prompts to make them as efficient as possible. And like I say, I test them on children before I release them in the app. It's totally free to download and you get started in seconds. 
And um, and last year we were even uh, featured by the BBC, which was uh, which is kind of cool. Um, one of our one of our proudest moments so far. Uh, so people say nice things about us. Um, if you've ever heard of thunks, quite a few schools use thunks, which are these um, head scratchy questions. Um, they're written by this chap called Ian Gilbert, who's a member of our advisory board now. This is what he says, right? What gives anyone the edge is the ability to think. I think we'd all agree with that. And um, he loves the range and quality of questions we have in the app. Uh, tutors recommend us. Um, initially, I was meant to do this session with Jane. But she got a little bit busy. Um, but her and I have worked together in the past. And she talks about sustaining learning between tutoring sessions and the Kid Coach app being perfect for that. Um, and of course, parents are using our app very successfully. I've worked a lot with Sonia here, who is a mum of two kids. One has gone through the 11 plus, the other is preparing. And she loves how there are different skill sets that the cards are, are tagged to. And I'll show you that in a second, actually. Um, it's simple, effective, and a nice way to have conversations with our kids on the go. So it really just, just does just take seconds to get started. And to, um, to show you exactly what I mean, and, and sort of walk you through it a little bit, before I tell you how you can get a hold of these slides. I wanna, oh, excuse me, as this is hung a little bit. By the way, be thinking about any questions that you have. I, I really wanna kind of leave time for a bit of a, a Q and A. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't back up my presentation. How, uh, how odd. Um, oh, here we go. Cool. I just want to show you how, um, how quick it is. So uh, just go to your usual app store, the Google app, Google Play Store, or your Apple App Store. All you do is type in Kid Coach app, all one word, and you will see it come up. It's this blue and white icon. And this is what it will look like, something similar. Uh, it's a five-star app and you just, you just download it. And that'll take a few seconds. And once you've, um, launch the app, you'll see something like this. And all you're going to do is click through the first few screens. Um, it's all like, it's all totally free at this point. So, you know, just, uh, just sign up, put in a simple password and away you go. Your account is created, literally takes seconds. There's a little demo video that you can watch that can pop up. And then you will be in the app literally takes seconds. And now you're in the app and you see some of the questions that we've been going through here, right? The desert island question, um, what would you do with a million pounds? Like the lottery question, is there life on other planets? And so on. And um, what's really cool that is a total bonus for you guys is that we don't just do critical thinking. <laughs> I mean, we absolutely do. If you're in the find screen, you can search for critical thinking questions, but we also do things on, uh, on leadership that I think you might really enjoy. Scroll through that a little bit so you get an example. Um, we also do things on our confidence. Yeah, there's an awful lot there, but um, but again, this is the critical thinking one. Here's another problem, right? Reducing litter. How would you reduce litter on the streets? And again, with each card, what I want to say is that there are lots and lots of prompts for children that help you facilitate the conversation. All right, super. So, so go go do that is what I would suggest. I would I would um, love to hear if you have any questions about what we've just covered. Um, anything you're not sure about? Any anything you want to ask me? Um, I'll stay on the line for that. Um, I also want to let you know how to get these slides, right? So there's an awful lot of stuff in the slides. Lots of different links out to to free questions. Um, all you have to do is go to to this. URL, right? www.kidcoach.app forward slash critical dash thinking dash talk. And what I will do is put that in the chat box as well. So the link is in the chat box if you want to go to, to get these slides. Um, what's also in these slides that we haven't, um, actually, I'll, I'll show you the bonus in a second. Uh, let's just check if there were any 
questions. Um, thank you, it's been helpful. Thank you. Thank you, awesome. Yeah, make sure you get the slides at least. Definitely go download the app, it's free to do so. Um, in these slides also, I wanna share a bonus framework, right? We did three frameworks, but there's this bonus one in here, which I didn't include because it's a little bit more complicated, but it's actually pretty awesome. Um, and to give you 30 seconds on it now, but you can read more when you have the slides. It's from a company called Dialogueworks, who's also on our advisory board. And they've come up with a really neat list of 26 different thinking moves, as they call them, to 26 different ways to think, um, one for each letter of the alphabet. So it's very, very memorable. And here's a summary graphic. Um, in the slides, I highlight a few of them. Things like A for ahead, hmm, what could happen next? Or um, L for listening and looking. Let's look around, what do we notice? Or T for testing. How can, we, how can we test this? How can we tell if it works before we try it? And so on. Um, and in the slides, I give you a worked example on this question. If you could live forever, would you want to? And as usual, a, a link down here to open up the card in the Kid Coach app. Um, cool, guys. So ho hopefully you're starting to see yourself emerge as, this, uh, as a super parent. Um, check the chat box for the link for the slides. And um, I, I really encourage you to go and download the app. Um, it's free to download, 100% risk-free. Might as well have a go, right? Cool. Um, let me see if there's any other comments. Um, thank you. Thank you, kids in particular, for jumping in with your comments. I, it was really, truly amazing, some of the stuff you came up with. I um, absolutely love it. I'm going to scroll back and have a look at the, uh, the chat box. Um, all right. Awesome. I'll just put the link in again. I, um, I will stay on the line just for a few minutes, just in case anybody does have any questions. Um, if you want to ask me directly, you can do it in the, uh, the toggle box as well. Just, uh, just send your comment to hosts and panelists. Um, so I'll stay on the line just in case anybody does want to talk in that way for a few minutes. Um, but, but otherwise, um, thank you for joining. Um, I hope that was a productive use of an hour. I hope that you um, will try out these frameworks at the dinner table tomorrow. And if the Kid Coach app can help you do that, then even better. Um, and best of luck, the 11 plus interview and the preparation remaining for that. I have a, a Facebook group, which I can also send you details of if you, um, if you, if you, if you sign up on the form where this link is, um, I'll also tell you about our Facebook group, which helps you with 11 plus interview stuff um, if you're not already in it. Otherwise, have a fantastic evening, everybody. Like I say, I'll stay here for a few minutes just in case anybody does want to chat. Um, have a great evening, everyone. You're very welcome. Very welcome, Chahil. Good to good to talk again. All right, awesome. I'm going to end the call now. Take care, everyone, and uh, see you soon.